In this video, we'll talk a little bit about the units of measurement and how um, changes in the units of measurements causes the interpretation to change of our coefficients. And we'll talk also about the changes in functional form and how that affects our interpretations. So here, um, the important thing to remember is that before interpreting, you should know how y and x are measured, right? What are the units of measurement? So let's start with an example. So uh, if you want, in R, you can uh, take a look at the CEO salary, CEO salary data, um, where annual CEO salaries are measured in thousands of dollars, and the return on equity is a is measured as a percentage okay so we're basically saying that the ceo salary really depends on their return on equity right makes sense right and uh there's nothing else in this equation but we just want to focus on the interpretation here so let's say we we predicted this um sample regression line right so this is saying uh, uh the intercept is 963 and the slope is 18.5 Okay, and uh, th this is a really bad fit for the data, right? The R square is, is like 1%. Okay, and uh, this is on 209 CEOs, we had that data. Okay, so uh, let's try to focus on the interpretation of this. So remember that when we are trying to inter uh, interpret the intercept, this is basically saying what happens when this is equal to zero. When x is zero, what is y, right? And this is, even though the return on equity in this data set is never zero, uh, we can still make some sort of um, a statement about what does it mean, right? So if, if ROE, return on equity, is zero, then the salary is 963, but then this is in thousands of dollars. So really, this is this is what the uh, prediction is. So if your return on equity is zero, as a CEO, on average, you're still making $963,191, according to this model, okay? Um, now, if we focus our attention on this coefficient, the slope coefficient here, we find that because this is, this is in percentage, right? The changes in uh, return on equity, the change in return on equity should be interpreted in percentage points. Okay, so the changes should be in percentage points because it is measured in uh, percentage terms. Okay, so we can basically say a one unit change in X. So a one percentage point change in return on equity increases, because this is positive, increases predicted salary by 18.5, or to be more precise, by $18,501. Okay, because this is salary is reported in thousands, right? So we are trying to predict the increase in or predict the changes in this variable, which is measured in thousands, right? So that's what our interpretation is going to be. Now let's assume that we changed our variable x, okay? So let's create another variable, which is, which is return on equity decimal, ROE decimal, which is basically a manipulation of that variable we were using. So we're basically dividing this by 100, the old variable by 100, and creating this new variable. What would happen if we threw this into our regression? Okay, so we ran this, if we ran, ran the regression of salary on this new variable. Okay, now we would imagine or we would we would we can think that well nothing should happen to the intercept because if this is equal to zero right which is the same as saying this is zero the old variable is zero the slope the the intercept should not change right so no change in intercept 
That's number one. And the second thing is that we should, we, because we were trying to think about this, salary equals beta naught hat plus beta one hat uh, ROE, right? If we made this, if we divided this guy by 100, this should multiply this should be multiplied by 100, right? So our slope should multiply by 100 to keep that effect constant or to keep this equation um, balanced, okay? Or maybe a, a better way of saying this is that for this equation to hold, this is what should happen. If we are dividing this by 100, this should be multiplied by 100 and there should be no change in this so that the old relationship holds, okay? And also, we should not find that the goodness of fit, fit um, or R squared changes, okay? So we find that there are two things. One is that there is no change in intercept. And the other change is that the slope is becoming 100 times, okay? If we made that change. Okay, so the new regression line, if you were to try it, you can try this, um, create the new variable, run a regression of salary on this. You would notice that nothing happened to the intercept, but the slope changed. So earlier it was 18.5, now it became 1850, right? So it multiplied by 100. Um, and now the interpretation is pretty much the same as before, okay? So here, if we are talking about the decimal variable, okay, a change in a decimal by 0 0.01 is the same as a one percentage point change in the uh, old x variable that we had, okay? So we're basically, these are the same. These are the same. So we're capturing the same effect. Okay, now what would happen? So back to the same model as before. Um, now what would happen if we changed the y variable, right? So we had that, let's say this is the expression we had, right? We estimated this. What if we start to measure y in, um, in dollars rather than uh, thousands of dollars, right? So we're basically creating this new variable, um, salary dollars, which is thousand times salary. Because salary was measured in thousands, this salary dollars is just thousand times salary, right? So we actually have the actual salary now reported, okay? So to keep this equation balanced, if this, got, this side is getting multiplied by a thousand or a million, this side will also be multiplied by a thousand or a million, right? That's what would happen. So the intercept and slope would go both get multiplied by a thousand and we would get something like this, where our new variable, salary dollars equals 963,191 plus 18,501 times return on equity, okay? So um, this is what we get. Okay, and we can try um, another example uh, and see what would happen if the if in our example with the votes and the share of expenditures we use decimals rather than percents. So the good thing to I mean the best way to do this is to write down the original equation, right? So we write down the original equation, which was. Um, vote A equals 26.81 plus 0.464 share A. Now, if we divide both vote A and share A by 100, right? We are just dividing this by 100 and this by 100, right? Nothing is happening to the slope, right? Nothing should happen to this relationship because the effect of this guy on this guy should be the same. We've divided both by this, right? But there, but then there should, have, there should be something that happens to the intercept. The intercept 
gets divided by 100 and becomes 0.2681. And you can try this at home.